Hello everybody and welcome to another Python 3 uh, tutorial video and also the beginning of a bit of a mini-series for matplotlib. Um, if you want to know even more about matplotlib after this series, I would just say I've got a very extensive matplotlib series on my channel. It is in Python 2.7, uh, but aside from print functions and then also the difference between try and accept, uh, the code should be completely portable over to Python 3. My goal here is just to show you guys some quick basics for matplotlib uh, and then move on. But if you want to know more about customization, maybe uh, fancy graphing and charting and all of that, definitely check out that other series. But here I'm just going to show you a lot of the basics. Now, matplotlib is not a part of your standard library. You will have to download it. It is a third-party module. Uh, luckily for everyone, this should be very simple to download. Um, but I, I suppose if you're on Linux or something like that, it, it might be... A, little more tedious but actually downloading modules on Linux is very simple downloading them on say Windows is, is very challenging sometimes um, but luckily uh, I'll show you guys here uh, that it is not too bad so uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, the first thing I want to show you guys is first of all um, <clears throat> the website is matplotlib.org uh, is the official website for this you can come down and go to the matplotlib downloads page and you can actually, you'll find that there are uh, executable, downloadable uh, files for you to install matplotlib on your system. Now, we're actually running on Python 3.4, and for whatever reason, they have not updated uh, matplotlib.org to include Python 3.4. Um, and last I checked, you actually can't even run 3, because it, it, it's going to look for, you know, C clone slash Python 33, not 34. So that won't even really work. But you could come here also and download the source. You set up .exe or just yourself move the files. But that's obviously somewhat of a challenge for some people. So we're not going to do that. Uh, instead, we're going to come over here to this website's um, this. I'll put the link in the description if I forget. Someone remind me. I've been pretty good lately about remembering to put uh, the links in the descriptions, but I like to forget sometimes. So come over here, and this website, I highly suggest you just bookmark this website. Anytime you want to install something for Python, especially if you're a 64-bit Python user, you'll find that a lot of times you can't get 64-bit uh, versions of modules inherently. Uh, but what this guy does is he maintains his page um, and adds .exe installers uh, for 32-bit and 64-bit, and also, as you'll see, he's even updated some of them to include the proper version or the current version. So, for example, we can go find and search for matplotlib, and here it is. So we can click on that, and it comes down here, and we're at the matplotlib. Now, as you can see, there's a ton of stuff here. What I'm interested in and what you're interested in, most likely, at least if you're watching this video right now, is going to be either this one right here for 64-bit, or you can come down here for the 32-bit. Um, or actually, this is what you would run here for 32-bit. Now, um, I already have it installed, so I'm not going to reinstall it. But take note up here, all of the things that are required, uh, or uh, it says requires. I think it really means like if you want to use every part of matplotlib, you need all these things. Um, I just suggest you download NumPy for sure, dateutil, pytz, pyparsing, 6, and then, oh, okay, they do say optionally. <laughs> Foot in mouth. Um, yeah, you should be able to just not download any of these. There, I don't see any reason why you would need these, uh, at least for now. So anyway, download, you know, just, just hold down control, click on, you know, the version of matplotlib, then click on date util, pydz, pyparsing 6, and then you should be brought to each of those, right, because of the way that we uh, click them. Download those, install those, and you'll be ready to go. So once you're, so do that, pause the video now while you're installing it if you don't have it. Uh, and then pick back up. <clears throat> so I'm done with that. Now let's go ahead, um, assuming you've got everything installed, um, uh, we're ready to actually begin. So first we need to import matplotlib. Now generally uh, for just basic plotting we use what's called pyplot in matplotlib. So really you want to do some do the following. So uh, we'll come up to the top from matplotlib import pyplot. And you could stop here, but most people will import PyPlot as PLT. So you'll be seeing a lot of example code probably if you're ever like looking up how to do something. You'll see people use PLT, that's why. Same thing with like NumPy, people use NP. It's just what people do. Now, um, the next thing that we would want to do is PLT.plot. And then in here, you, can, you plot X's and you plot Y's. So um, you could just plot a simple, you know, five, seven. So 5x, 7 is y, 
Um, but let's actually make lists out of this. So we plot x as a list 5, 6, 7, 8, let's say. And then y is a list 7, 3, 8, 3. Okay. So what this does <clears throat> is it generates this plot and it will draw them onto this plot for you. But you won't see anything if this is all you do. You have to always end with a plt.show. And later on, you might get the idea that you want to make live graphs or graphs that update. Um, and it's important to understand how this actually works because plot just kind of puts it up there. And then actually, I used the wrong word, but you've got draw, which actually draws it onto the figure. And then you have to reshow uh, to actually update the figure. So just keep that in mind for way later down the road. But just understand that this plotting it does not actually make the graph show up. It just kind of stores it to memory what it ought to look like. And then plot.show brings it up. So with that, let's go ahead and save and run it. And up pops the following graph. So as you can see, we've uh, made a whole lot of progress in very short time. Uh, we've got a nice window here, so you've been through the tkinter tutorial, so you can uh, maybe um, appreciate what we have going on here. So we've got this figure, and uh, I could be wrong, but I'm almost certain that uh, matplotlib is actually generated all with tkinter. So a lot of people ask um, ask me to do a tutorial on how to put matplotlib into tkinter, <laughs> and uh, sometimes I just want to respond and be like, look at the documents for matplotlib, because that's exactly what matplotlib is doing. Anyway, so because like these are buttons, you know, these are buttons that are added in by a tkinter and all that. So anyway, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so we've got a chart. Um, I guess it would be kind of helpful to run through all of these options real quickly for you guys. Um, so the first one is home. Now I can't really show you much about home because we haven't done anything, but it will reset your view to the original view that you were looking. And in fact, let me bring this over like this at least. So that's home. Um, then you've got the forward and back. So I guess the first thing we should do, let's zoom in first to get a feel for everything. So this is a zoom. So you get this little button and you can click and drag and you basically just zoom into that spot. Um, so then home will reset back to where you, you know, the original view. So let's zoom in one more time. And then you have these buttons here, which is forward and back. So let's zoom in one more time and we're like, oh man, it's too close, we're not seeing anything. So you hit the back arrow and you go back a little bit. But let's say you misclicked and you went back twice. Darn it, you wanna go back forward again so you can click the forward arrow and get back again. Uh, this one is just so you can kinda of like click and drag and pull this thing around. It looks better probably if you're in home, but you can see that you can just click and move it around. Um, and then finally, well, obviously this is just to save the figure. It's gonna, by nature, oh, this one saves as PNG. Um, Let's see. I think nor in Python 2.7 the default is like this TIFF and it's really annoying. But it looks like they've figured it out and now it's by default PNG. Anyway, that's how you can save the figure that you're looking at to like an image file or, or actually they have a quite a few different file types. Finally, configure subplots. Um, you probably will stop using this and you'll actually be coding it into your script but it's helpful to know. Um, this is just distance right on the side. So left, how much distance on the left do we want to allow for? How much distance, oh, let me move this up. How much distance on the bottom do we want to allow for? Right, top, and then uh, W space and H space, you're not gonna be able to see that right now. It's when you have multiple figures or multiple plots on the same figure. Um, so here is your figure, right? And then this is a, a plot basically. And if you have multiple plots, it's a subplot. <coughs> So this will be, you know, the space on the sides of, of all the plots, and then this will be the space on the top of all the plots. Again, you probably won't find yourself using this too much, um, besides just for testing. So if you generate a plot with, say, 15 figures or 15 plots on it, um, you might you gotta like watch your mouth when you're like talking about matplotlib and a lot of coding stuff, man, because you want to use specific terms, and it's not. You know, you think of a figure like in textbooks, they always refer to like each little thing as a figure. But here, a figure is the entire window, and then you've got the plots within it. So anyway, I keep wanting to call them figures, so I'm trying to trying to be careful. But anyway, when you have multiple subplots on there, you might use this to be like, okay, well, I want to hard code it to always be left, you know, point zero six, bottom, whatever, you know, and so on. So you'll use it maybe there, but eventually you'll start like hard coding in these values because you can set it in your script what you want these values to be. They just happen to have a default. 
So uh, anyway, that concludes uh, the intro to Matplotlib. There's a, a lot more to do uh, in this, this little mini-series. Again, there is even way more that you can do than what I'll cover here, but uh, I'll get you guys at least uh, started on Matplotlib. So anyway, that's going to conclude this video. Stay tuned for the next video for a continuation of Matplotlib. If you guys have any questions or comments on these three lines of very complex code, feel free to leave them below. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions, and until next time.